So, like, I finally caught up to Blood on the Tracks, right? And, um, hmm, I don't really know what to say. It was really messed up. There's some good macaroni salad. Yeah, how's it going, everybody? It's the Masked Man, or Asura. I don't know. Today might be a little bit of a mixed video where you get both personas, as I kind of want to get into my own personal raw reaction of it, and then kind of get into the analysis. So maybe I should get the reaction of it now, save the analysis. Uh, yeah. So I had previously heard of Blood on the Tracks or Trail of Blood uh, ever since the Super Eye Patch Wolf video. And whenever Super Eye Patch Wolf or Scamboli cover something, then everybody floods my comments telling me to cover the same thing. Now, in my last video, I talked about No Longer Human, both manga adaptations based off of the original novel, and so I must say I'm pretty used to stories that are supposed to, like, really mess with your mind and kind of break you, quote-unquote. The thing is, is after eight or nine of those stories, you really become numb to the sentiments of it, however, you can still really appreciate what it's capable of doing. And I must say, regardless of me being kind of used to these type of stories now, Trail of Blood or Blood on the Tracks has a very unique ability to really disturb you beyond anything you have ever read. And that includes everything I have talked about before. It, it truly is the most disturbing read I have ever had, and I think that's due to the setting of the story. We basically meet this kid, just this normal kid, and, um... The, the twist is, is his mom is an absolute psychopath. This woman has some serious problems. Some serious, serious problems. And you can see how it mentally affects the state of her own child. And the relationship between a child and their mother, more specifically a son and his mom, is one that not only connects to me, but almost any other human being on the planet. I mean, think about all the things your mom probably taught you or helped you with. Or all the times you got um, a not so good grade on your report card and then you met her good old friend, the belt. You see, usually as a Hispanic guy, I get the chancla joke a lot. I wish I would have taken a sandal over a belt any day of the- Sorry, sorry, off topic. I was getting into my repressed memories this time. The really weird and disturbing thing about it though is just how how uh the presentation of it is is really what drives it home and and that's usually the case with a lot of psychological mangas they're able to depict things in usually a relatively abstract manner but are able to drive home the feelings so well and it's really capable of creating these insane moments of tension whenever the child feels like he's free from his mother then for the mother to appear and it uses this amazing contrast of bright tones versus dark ones within the artwork. It's able to give two completely different types of tones, yet know how to implement them perfectly and just really drive home the setting and the feel that it's trying to go for in that specific scene. It also does this through very exaggerated facial expressions, at times the little kid acting like an infant once again, and the mother looking like a deranged serial killer psychopath. It really does an amazing job of depicting a manipulative, toxic, and just harmful relationship whilst also making you realize just how important the parental role is within a child's life. It's a story with a lot of different twists and turns that leave you always wanting more and always wanting to see what will be the final conclusion of the series, as it likes to do that a lot, and I've noticed a lot of psychology series do that. They'll kind of try to bait you in with these moments of relief and then bam, just hit you with the absolute madness. And I, like I said, at this point, I should probably be used to that. But the fact that these stories are capable of still baiting my emotions in and out every time just shows that, again, these are just well done stories. Now, upon further observation, whilst reading the manga more and more and more, you might come to the conclusion that both of them suffer from schizophrenia, although I don't know if that's the case yet. Therefore, I do not know the final message which is left to be had with the characters and what's actually going on in reality versus what might be going on in their mind. Personally, I feel like Trail of Blood might have some sort of ambiguous left to interpretation ending, although that might just be me coming off of seeing American Psycho. But man, this is this is more than just disturbing. It's just flat out uncomfortable many of the times. Things get so just creepily sensual with at times some of the character interactions that you kind of cringe a lot while reading it. I don't know what it is with psychology stories and the dude eventually finding out what beaten off is and then busting. Like this was made by the same author as Flowers of Evil, right? And so I would have expected some of the disturbance and just really uneasy feeling that you get while 
while reading it from, you know, this story as well, but this took it like five whole notches, and I think the overall plot of this story is much better as well. The artwork has also improved a ton, as I've brought up before, in comparison with the other work, Flowers of Evil. Now, I did say stay away from that manga. Of course, that was me trying to implement some sort of reverse psychology with the title, which actually kind of worked, ironically. But just like I said with the Flowers of Evil manga, and it applies even more so with Trail of Blood, Blood on the Tracks, if you don't think you're mentally in the best state to read this, if you are someone who's easily disturbed or creeped out by certain things, then you're probably going to end up dropping this series. It's not really for the faint of heart, and even though it is kind of known as the manga that breaks people, it didn't necessarily break me, but it was able to draw a lot of emotions from me. For instance, I think any sort of manipulative character within a series is able to draw out a really deep underlying rage within myself towards that character. And while manipulative is kind of the bingo word with this mom, she's just downright terrifying, and she really serves as, I guess you could say, the antagonistic force within this series. She's downright horrifying, almost on Johan Leibert levels. Psychological stories are very difficult to get into and really try to talk about the plot without really giving away all the major spoilers and feels, and so I'm kind of in a little bit of a little bit of a pickle, mind you, when it comes to talking about this series. So, do I recommend it because of its quality? Yes, I think it's an experience everyone should have when reading my- well, maybe not everyone, but essentially, I do think it is a story of immense quality, however, I don't think it is for everybody to read, or at least maybe not at the moment for you. But knowing how humanity works, the fact that I tell you, hey, maybe you shouldn't read it, now you're going to think to yourself, now I really want to read it, and you're probably going to start reading it immediately after you're done with this video or later tonight. But that might just be a small hunch. Now, if I had to point out a lot of the major psychological things that it does cover in this manga, for sure repressed memories and remembering one's past and accepting one's past is a big part of it. I think it really tackles dependency and maybe the illusion of love through manipulation and that dependency is tackled really well in this story. I think it also is extremely capable of communicating guilt throughout this tale as well, kind of showing how just taxing it is on a human being to keep a secret as immense of one is within this story. I mean, it also tackles a lot of other things like mental trauma, stress, anxiety, a lot of different emotions are actually conveyed throughout this entire series as well as depression. But I think if there's one major message that you can get from the series while reading it and after you catch up is being your own person devoid of whatever your past is whatever your past traumas experiences no matter what your family is like you are your own person at the end of the day and you need to be strong enough to kind of forge your own path the reality is is one day the bird is gonna have to leave the nest but how far can that bird fly once it leaves and really how long it can survive in the wilderness that is the world and within this story that's already made difficult enough if your nest or your home the area where you're supposed to be nurtured and taught things to be able to deal with the real world is already a terrible place enough but i think that's all i can really say about blood on the tracks without really getting too much into spoiler territory but hopefully you enjoyed this video Nonetheless, and if you are new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications so that we know if I whenever a new video pops up on some of your favorite anime, manga, or whatever content. Hope everyone has a blessed rest of the day and peace.